Hi everybody, Joshua here with the Heavy Piano YouTube channel. Um, somebody asked for me to kind of talk about how I played Pure Imagination. Um, I'm just going to kind of talk about some of my voicings I use. I, I, I want to give a disclaimer, like, I, I hesitate to create a video like this because I am not necessarily a, uh, <laughs> a, a jazz musician, quote unquote. Um, I, I do use lead sheets and all that, and, um, and actually when I improvised my version, I did use a lead sheet. So um, if you want to learn this the way I play it, I would go ahead and Google pure imagination, you know, dot PDF or sheet music or whatever, or lead sheet to kind of find a version. Um, I'm going off of one that's in the key of E flat major. Um, so uh, this is just like a real book version. I think it's in the third uh, volume of the real book. Um, there's tons that are like this. Um, so basically, I'm going to use that as kind of a framework of, of explaining why I come up with the voicings that I used. Um, so the first thing right at the top there, we have this little motif. It's a an octave, and then you go just half note below the octave, right? And you come back to the octave. So I was playing around with this a lot. Um, just kind of picking, you know, just like picking different uh, different parts, you know, and you can get, make it as clashy, you know, hold the pedal down, let it ring out a little bit, you know. So like, we haven't really defined what the key is out of that. So from that, I, I would encourage you to kind of like go take this little motif and kind of like find... You know, like to create the kind of atmosphere you're looking for at the beginning. So that's what I was doing on, the, on my acoustic. I did a little bit on the keyboard when I created the MIDI version. Um, and then once I've kind of set my stage a little bit, I come back and then I'm going to start flowing notes on this F minor 7 chord. Right, so we're looking at F minor 7, adding maybe ninth in there, 11th, you know, 13. We can extend the chord out as much as we want. You know, you can put the, chord, put the notes together. There's this stacked fifth voicing I've talked about before on the channel I really like, and you'll see me actually, actually the first voicing I use in the song. But anyway, trying to set the stage, right? So we've, we've like set the, the mood with this a little bit, right? And then I'm gonna throw in some supporting notes. Maybe don't do that E natural. <laughs> that was a little ugly. But anyway, yeah, the idea is to, to create a mood for the piece. And so after I did that, um, then I kind of just came in and I, I was using the lead sheet as, as a structure and framework and basis, more or less. Um, you know, you start, and then my first voicing is that stacked fifth voicing. So over the F minor seven. And I, I really like that voicing. Um, yeah. Next voicing is that with B flat. It's like a B flat sus, they say it's sus. So one of the ways I like to think about B flat sus chords, is take your B flat and then go a whole step below, right? And you get kind of a sus chord sound. You can add into other notes. So I'm um, going back to the F minor seven. So there's like our stacked fifth voicing and see how there's my A flat chord in there. Makes it kind of like a B flat sus. Um, this may be a no-no doubling the seventh there. That's just one of the voicings I use. I would play around a little bit. You could change some of those voicings. And then I like to spread out the E flat major seven, right? Um, you could do that. You could do, you know, any, any number of modifications in there. And then I usually walk up F minor to the F sharp diminished. And it's basically like a, a, a G minor or an E flat over G. And then one of the things I like to do, I like to walk a ha uh, like a, ha um, a half note down to the C. And then here I'm using this voicing, which I kind of like. So again, I have like the fifths on the left hand and I'm doing a minor third, seventh and, and ninth there. So let me, let me come, so let me start from the beginning. Stacked fifth voicing, sus voicing, voicing. It's like an open major seven. Just kind of walking the bass up. There's my half step. There's that voicing. Another suspended voicing. And there's E flat diminished. 
So that's kind of how I'm voicing them. There, there's nothing like too jazzy, or I mean, they're jazz chords, but I'm not, I'm not like really thinking outside the box here, if that makes sense. They're kind of standard jazz chords, is what I mean to say. Same thing again. You know, and even like doing that, those half notes, you know, I could do up to the. I can add that B flat in there. And, th you know, the second time you do it, it goes to this G major 7 kind of sound. And what I actually did in my acoustic version, I didn't do it in the, in the MIDI version. So I kind of hung out on the G minor 7 for a while, and then I made it major when I wanted to go into the B section. So going to the B section, we got that, what, A flat, major 7, G minor 7. To uh, see, we got that flat nine in there. Again, these are pretty standard voicings. I'm not not breaking the mold here. There's my F minor seven voicing again. Again, you've seen that before. B flat sus. You know, and again, I'm like picking points to hit chords and when to roll. Um, I'm not doing a whole lot of like um, melodic movement. I'm just kind of playing it using the chords given. I was here. A minor, flat five, D7. Again, look at that real standard voicing. I'm spreading out a little bit there for that G minor seven, C7. Again, real standard there. I'm sure you can find, or I'm sure somebody with real jazz chops can find some better voicings. There. And I kind of like those, uh, those like that walked forth. I don't know why. You know, mess around a little bit with there, that B flat seven, you can kind of modify it. Back to my stacked F minor seven again, B flat sus, spread out E, major, e flat major. You know that, you know, walking up to the C minor to F minor seven. And it goes to G major seven. You'll probably see that if you're using a lead sheet. Again, I think I, I hung out, I hung out in the minor and then I took it to major. And one of the things in the version I'm looking at here, it has like a D flat seven, D seven to E six nine. I talked about um, major voicings uh, using like the, the third and the, like spreading out like an octave and picking either a major seventh or you know like for instance the E flat major using the third and the major seventh and stacking one of those into an octave um, you can also try moving around you know doubling that sharp 11 kind of sound um, it's more of an open sound I use it sometimes but yeah I, I know that's probably I don't know if it's what people are looking for, but that's more or less how I'm thinking about it. I think when I created the version on my acoustic, I did play around more with some chord progressions and jumping outside of the chords. Um, but I am just kind of using some standard jazz chords. But, you know, um, there might be there's probably some better tutorials online about how to actually like make it more jazz but it's such a beautiful piece i use it all the time at work it works well for ballet because it's kind of in you know it's in like eight measure phrases um which is what is required for that for my job anyway if you have any questions or comments leave them below um, thank you, Dylan, for suggesting the song. I hope you found this somewhat helpful. Again, yeah, just kind of if you want to find some decent lead sheets, there's tons of stuff online. Um, you know, Google pureimagination.pdf or lead sheet or sheet music, and you should be able to find something that will kind of help you get started. I hope some of the voicings were helpful to you. You can see my hands and kind of 
hear a little bit of my method. Again, I, I, I hope nobody thinks I'm claiming to be some jazz pianist or something like that, but I do use a lot of like jazz jazz chords or some ideas out of jazz, but um, there's definitely more developed um, ideas for pure imagination. I would check out other pianists, especially see kind of what um, a pianist like Brad Meldow might do with pieces like this. And I don't know if he's specifically done like a pure imagination uh, arrangement, but um, he definitely is a master of you know, interweaving melodies and not just like playing chord, 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 but really moving, moving notes between to like weave kind of like a melodic story in his arrangements. But anyway, hope that's helpful. Thank you for watching. I want to say a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for supporting the channel. Thanks to everybody who comments and, you know, the likes and all that, all the playing the silly YouTube game of trying to get picked up by an algorithm or whatever. But, you know, anyway, here's the video. You search for it. I hope you found it helpful. I will catch you next time. Oh, one last thing. I pulled back, you can tell, if you watch the videos, you, this is real easy. I brought that back near the end um, of, of my impro improvised versions. Just kind of like harken back to the main idea. All right, so now I'll say thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. <laughs> Bye.